After World War II, Japan achieved rapid economic growth. But much was sacrificed. Clean water and air, and fertile, life-giving soil. All things that people cannot live without. Starting in the 1950s and continuing into the 1970s, Japan became a virtual center for environmental pollution. The sixth in this series on Japan's pollution experience addresses how Japan made an effort to restore the most important source of life, the water it had so gravely polluted. In the latter half of the 1950s, in the shadow of Japan's rapid growth, the Minamata and Itaitai diseases quietly appeared. Mercury and cadmium, discharged by factories, found their way first into rice and fish, and from there into human beings. These were the first instances of illness that the Japanese would endure due to environmental pollution. But it took a long time for people to acknowledge that this sickness was being caused by industrial effluence. And in the meantime, water was being polluted everywhere. The paper industry, which uses particularly large quantities of water, filled Japan's oceans with contaminated materials. They discharged surplus fibers, and as a result, fishermen in Chiba and Shizuoka prefectures were no longer able to fish. In 1958, Angry fishermen stormed a paper mill. この漁民たちは金田から工場から流れる汚水のため漁獲量が減っていると抗議し、この日工場長に面会を求めて断られたためこの騒ぎとなったものです。in response to such protests, water quality legislation was passed. But so as not to hinder Japan's economic growth, the new standards were exceedingly loose. Because no limits were set regarding the quantities discharged, companies diluted waste until the concentrations of pollutants satisfied the law. In Kawasaki City, Kanagawa Prefecture, plants of all sizes and types sprung up everywhere. Among them were plating factories, overrun with orders for the coating of construction tools and heavy machine parts. Takashi Tsubouchi, who was hired to work at a plating factory at the time, said that harmful chemical substances were discharged without concern. They didn't bother. In those days, industries made money even if they discharged all the time. So substances were discharged in great quantities. Everything was new. You could make fluids and whatever else and that would be fine. Things were so bad it's a wonder anyone survived. We worked in a cloud of bright yellow vapor. Even wearing a mask the stuff came in. Chromium would collect in your nose and dissolve the cartilage. So people started getting the symptoms of a perforated septum. I thought, this is some place I've come to. During this time of rapid economic growth, there were virtually no controls, and Mr. Tsubouchi grew concerned about his work environment. Chromium is really noxious stuff. So I asked if the company could think more about the health of its employees. I was told, this place is clean, and all you talk about is contamination. Why don't you quit and go work someplace really clean? That was the management's thinking. They weren't concerned about pollution. Unable to endure these conditions, 
Mr. Tsubouchi eventually left the company. In the Mikawa Bay, the cultivation of seaweed, eel, and short-necked clams prospers. The fishing grounds abound in fish and shellfish. But 40 years ago, because of polluted water from upstream, the fishing industry came to a standstill. The 1960s saw the beginning of a development boom in the mountains in the upper reaches of the Ahagi River, the river that flows into Mikawa Bay. Whole mountains were leveled, golf courses were developed, forests were cleared and great quantities of earth were dumped into the river. Car manufacturers built plants halfway upstream and their effluent was poured into the river as well. With all this activity upstream, the Yahagi was transformed into a river of mud. Yoko Suzuki has long been involved in the cultivation of clams and seaweed here in Mikawa Bay. But with the accumulation of earth, sand and sludge resulting from development upstream, the fishing industry fell into a state of ruin. The clams, the fish, the seaweed in Mikawa Bay, they all died. And it was a matter of life or death for the fishermen. It was that kind of time. The sea was dead. Rice grown with water from the Yahagi River suffered from root rot and was found to have high concentrations of cadmium. Angry fishermen and farmers joined together and complained to the developers upstream. We'd take dead clams with us. They smelled awful. We'd open the clams, vent our anger, and see their reaction. We'd say, this is what happens, and ask them, what are you going to do about it? But they were unable to curb the discharge of contaminated water. In 1966, Yahagi River Water Preservation Council also known as the Yahagi Water Council, was formed. This was the beginning. Fishermen, farmers, and others for whom the water from the Yahagi River was the very staff of life were united. Members of the Yahagi River Council began by testing the water quality and locating, one after another, the sources of pollution. <laughs> 